Hello friends, welcome to this video. In today's video, we are going to do the chapter Resources and Development of Class 10th Geography. If you want to watch the same video in language Hindi, then you can visit the link below. Before we dive into today's video, I know you all love eTutor. Well, who doesn't? It's a fantastic platform that makes learning easy and fun. But wait, there's more. Head to eTutorGuru.in to access even more resources. There you will find detailed notes, mind maps and NCRT solutions all at one place. Everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided it is technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable can be termed as resource. This figure shows the independent relationship between nature, technology and institutions. Process of transformation of things available in our environment involves a interactive relationship between nature, technology and institutions. Human beings interact with nature through technology and create institutions to accelerate their economic development. Do you think that resources are free gifts of nature as is assumed by many? They are not. Resources are functions of human activities. Human beings themselves are essential components of the resources. They transform material available in our environment into resources and use them. These resources can be classified in the following ways. On the basis of origin, biotic and abiotic. On the basis of exhaustibility, renewable and non-renewable. On the basis of ownership, individual, community, national and international. On the basis of status of development, potential, developed stock and reserves. Types of resources On the basis of origin, biotic resources. These are obtained from the biosphere and have life such as human beings, flora and fauna, fisheries, livestock, etc. Abiotic resources, all those things which are composed of non-living things are called abiotic resources, for example rocks and metals. On the basis of exhaustibility, renewable resources, the resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical, chemical or mechanical processes are known as renewable or replenishable resources. For example, solar and wind energy, water, forest and wildlife etc. The renewable resources may be further divided into continuous or flow. Non-renewable resources. These occurs over a very long geological time. Minerals and fossil fuels are example of such resources. These resources take millions of years in their formation. Some of the resources like metals are recyclable and some like fossil fuels cannot be recycled and gets exhausted with their use. On the basis of ownership, individual resources, these are also owned privately by individuals. Many farmer owns land which is allotted to them by government against the payment of revenue. In villages, there are people with land ownership but there are many who are landless. Urban people own plot, houses and other properties. Plantation, pasture land, ponds, water in the wells etc. are some of the examples of resources ownership by individual. Community owned resources. These are resources which are accessible to all the members of the community. Village common, gazing ground, burial ground, village pond, parks, picnic spots, playgrounds in urban area are de facto accessible to all the people living there. National Resources Technically, all the resources belong to the nation. The country has the legal power to acquire even private property for public good. You might have seen roads, canals, railways being constructed on the field owned by some individuals. 
Urban Development Authorities get empowered by the government to acquire land, all the minerals, water resources, forest, wildlife, land within the political boundaries and the oceanic area up to 12 nautical miles that is 22.2 km from the coast termed as territorial water and resources therein belong to the nation. International resources there are international institutions which regulate some resources the oceanic resource beyond 200 nautical miles and no individual country can utilize these without the concurrence of international institutions do you know india got the right to mine manganese nodules from the bed of the indian ocean from the area which lies beyond the exclusive economic zone on the basis of status of development potential resources resources which are found in a region but are not being utilized for example the western parts of india particularly rajasthan and gujarat have enormous potential for the development of wind and solar energy but so far they have not been developed properly developed resources resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for utilization the development of resources depends on technology and level of feasibility stock material in the environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have the appropriate technology to access these are included among stocks for example water is a compound of two gases hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen can be used as a rich source of energy but we do not have advanced technical know how to use it in the purpose hence it can be considered as a stock reserves are the subset of the stock which can be put in use with the help of existing technology know how but their use has not been started these can be used for meeting future requirements river water can be used for generating hydroelectric power but presently it is being utilized only to limited extent thus the water in the dams forest is a reserve which can be used in the future development of resources resources are vital for human survival as well as for maintaining the quality of life it was believed that resources are free gifts of nature as a result human beings used them indiscriminately and this has led to the following major problem depletion of resources for satisfying the greed of few individuals accumulation of resources in few hands which in turn divided the society into two segments that is haves and have nots or rich and poor indiscriminate exploitation of resources has led to global ecological crisis such as global warming ozone layer depletion environmental pollution and land degradation a equitable distribution of resources has become essential for sustained quality of life and global peace it is the present trend of resource depletion by few individuals and countries continues the future of our planet is in danger Therefore resources planning is essential for sustainable existence of forms of life sustainable existence is a component of sustainable development sustainable development sustainable economic development means development should take place without damaging the environment and the development in the present should not compromise with the need of future generations Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit 1992 In June 1992 more than 100 heads of states meet in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the first international earth summit the summit was convened for addressing urgent problems of environmental protection and socio economic development at the global level The assembly leaders signed the declaration of the global climate change and biological diversity The Rio Convention endorsed the Global Forest Principle and adopted Agenda 21 for achieving sustainable development in the 21st century. Agenda 
in the declaration signed by the world leaders in 1992 at the United Nations Conference on the Environmental Development UNCED which took place at Rio de Janeiro Brazil it aims to achieving global sustainable development it is an agenda to combat environmental damage poverty disease through global cooperation on common interests mutual needs and shared responsibilities one major objective of the agenda 21 is that local government should draw its own local agenda 21 resource planning planning is the widely accepted strategy for judicious use of resources it has importance in country like india which has enormous diversity in the availability of resources There are regions which are rich in certain types of resources but are deficient in some other resources. Some regions which can be considered self-sufficient in terms of the availability of resources and there are some regions which have acute shortage of some vital resources. For example, the state of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh are rich in minerals and coal deposits. Arunachal Pradesh has abundance of water resources but lacks in infrastructural development. The states of Rajasthan is very well endowed with solar and wind energy. but lacks in water resources the cold desert of ladakh is relatively isolated from the rest of the country it has very high cultural heritage but it is deficient in water infrastructure and some vital minerals this calls for balanced resource planning at the national state regional and local levels Resource planning in India. Resource planning is a complex process which involves identification of inventory of resources across the region of the country. This involves surveying, mapping and measurement of resources, evolving a planning structure endowed with appropriate technology, skill and institutional setup for implementing resource development plans. matching the resource development plans with overall national development plans india has made concrete efforts for achieving the goals of resources planning right from the first 5 year plan launched after independence the availability of resources is necessary condition for the development of any region but mere availability of resources in the absence of corresponding changes in the technology and institutions may hinder the development There are many regions in our country that are rich in resources but these are included in economically backward regions on the contrary there are some regions which have a poor resource base but they have economically developed resources can contribute to the development only when they are accompanied by appropriate technological development and institutional changes conservation of resources resources are vital for any development activity but the irrational consumption and over utilization of resources may lead to socio economic and environmental problems to overcome these problems resource conservation at various levels is important this has been the main concern of the leaders and thinkers in the past for example gandhi ji was very apt in voicing his concern about the resource conservation in these words there is enough for everybody's need and not for anybody's greed he was against mass production and wanted to replace it with the production by the masses at the international level the club of rome advocated resource conservation for the first time in a more systematic way in 1986 subsequently in 1974 gandhian philosophy was once again presented by sumacher in his book small is beautiful the seminal contribution with respect to resource conservation at a global level was made by brentland commission report 1987 this report introduced the concept of sustainable development and advocated it is a mean of resource conservation which was subsequently published in a book entitled our common future another significant contribution was made at the earth summit at rio de janeiro brazil in 1992 land resources We live on land, we perform our economic activities on the land and we use it in different ways. 
Thus, land is a natural resource of utmost importance. It supports natural vegetation, wildlife, human life, economic activities, transport and communication systems. However, land is an asset of a finite magnitude. Therefore, it is important to use the land for various purposes with careful planning. India has land under a variety of relief features namely mountains, plateaus, plains and islands. About 43% of the land area is plain which provides facilities for agriculture and industry. Mountains account for the 30% of the total surface area of the country and ensure perennial flow of some rivers provide for the tourism and ecological aspects. About 27% of the area of the country is plain region, it possesses rich reserves of mineral, fossil fuels and forest. Land Utilization Land resources are used in the following purposes. First, forest. Second, land not available for cultivation, that is, barren and wasteland. And second is land put to non-agriculture uses, that is, building, road, factory, etc. Third, other uncultivated land, including the fallow land, permanent pastures and grazing grounds, land under miscellaneous tree crop groves, not included in the net zone area culturable waste land left uncultivated for more than five agricultural years. Fourth, fallow lands, current fallow left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year other than current fallow left uncultivated for past one to five agricultural year. Fifth is the net sown area, area sown more than once in agriculture year plus net sown area is known as the grass cropped area. Land Use Pattern in India The land of use is determined both by physical factors such as topography, climate, soil type as well as human factors such as population, density, technological capability and culture and traditions etc. Total geographical area under India is 3.28 million square kilometer. Land use data, however, is available only for the 93% of the total geographical area because the land use reporting for most of the northern eastern states except Assam has not been done fully. Moreover, some areas of Jammu and Kashmir occupied by Pakistan and China have also not been surveyed. The land under permanent pasture has also decreased. Most of the other than the current fellow lands are either of poor quality or the cost of cultivation of such land is very high. Hence, these lands are cultivated once or twice in about two to three years and is therefore is included in the net sown area. Then percentage of NSA in India comes to be 54% of the total reporting area. The pattern of the net sown area varies greatly from one state to another. It is over 80% of the total area in Punjab and Haryana and less than 10% in Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Manipur, Andaman, Nicobar Islands. Forest area in the country is far lower than the desired 33% of geographical area as it was outlined in India National Forest Policy 1952. It was considered essential for the maintenance of the ecological balance. The livelihood of millions of people who live on the fringes of these forests depend upon it. Continuous use of land over a long period of time without taking appropriate measure to conserve and manage it has resulted in the land degradation. Land degradation and the conservation measure. We have shared our land with the past generations and will do so with the future generations too. 95% of our basic needs of food, shelter and clothing are obtained from the land. In states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha, deforestation due to mining have caused severe land degradation. In states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, overgrazing is one of the main reasons for the land degradation. 
degradation in states like Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, over irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to the water logging leading to increase in the salinity and alkinity of the soil. The mineral processing like grinding of limestone for cement industry and calcite for soapstone for ceramic industry generates huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere. It retards the process of infiltration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land. In the recent years, industrial effluents as a waste have become major source of land and water pollution in many parts of the country. Planting of shelter belts of plants, control on overgrazing, stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny brushes are some of the methods to check land degradation in arid areas. Soil as resource Soil is the most important renewable natural resource. It is the medium of plant growth and supports different types of living organisms on the earth. The soil is a living system. It takes millions of years to form soil up to few centimeters in depth. Relief, parent rock or bedrock climate, vegetation and other forms of life and time are very important factors in the formation of the soil. Various forces of nature such as change in temperature, actions of running water, water, wind and glaciers, activities of decomposers, etc. contribute to the formation of soil, chemical and inorganic changes which takes place in the soil are equally important. Soil also consists of organic, humus and inorganic materials. On the basis of the factors responsible for the soil formation, color, thickness, age, chemical and physical properties, the soil of India are classified in different types. Classification of soil India has varied relief features, landforms, climate realms, and vegetation types. These have contributed in the development of various types of soils. First is alluvial soil. This is most widely spread and most important soil. In fact, the entire northern plains are made of alluvial soil. These have been deposited by three important Himalayan river systems, the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. The soil also extends in Rajasthan and Gujarat through a narrow corridor. Alluvial soil is also found in the eastern coastal plains, particularly in the deltas of the Mahanadi, the Godavari the Krishna and the Kaveri rivers. The alluvial soil consists of various proportions of sand, silt and clay. As we move inland towards the river valleys, soil particles appear somewhat bigger in size. In the upper reaches of the river valley, that is near the place of the break of the slope, the soils are chorus. According to their age, alluvial soil can be classified as old alluvial that is Bangar and new alluvial Khadar. The Bangar soil has higher concentration of Kankar nodules than the Khadar. It has more fine particles and is more fertile than the Bangar. Alluvial soil as a whole are very fertile. Mostly, these soil contains adequate proportion of potash, phosphoric acid and lime which are ideal for the growth of sugarcane, paddy, wheat and other cereal and pulse crops. Due to its high fertility, regions of alluvial soil are intensively cultivated and densely populated. Soils in the drier area are more alkaline and can be used in production afterwards of proper treatment and irrigation. Black soil These soils are black in color and are also known as rigor soils. Black soil is ideal for growing cotton and is also known as black cotton soil. It is believed that the climatic conditions along with the parent rock material are important factors for the formation of black soil. This type of soil is typical in the Deccan trap that is basalt region spread over the northwest Deccan plateau and is made up of lava flows. They cover the plateaus of Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and extend in the southeast direction along the Godavari and Krishna valleys. The black soil are made up of extremely fine clayed material. They are well known for their capacity to hold moisture. In addition, they are rich in soil nutrients such as calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash and lime. These soils are generally poor in phosphoric contents. They develop 
deep cracks during the hot weather which helps in the proper aeration of the soil. These soils are sticky when wet and difficult to work unless tilled immediately after the first shower or during the pre-monsoon period. Red and Yellow Soil Red soil develops on crystalline igneous rocks in areas of low rainfall in the eastern and the southern parts of the Deccan Plateau. Yellow and red soils are also found in parts of Odisha, Chhattisgarh, southern parts of the Middle Ganga Plain and along the Piedmont zone of Western Ghats. These soil develops a reddish color due to the diffusion of iron in the crystalline and metamorphic rocks. It looks like yellow when it occurs in hydrated form. Laterite soil Laterite has been derived from the Latin words later, which means brick. The laterite soil develops under the tropical and subtropical climate with alternative wet and dry seasons. This soil is the result of intense lynching due to the heavy rain. Lateritic soils are mostly deep to very deep. Acidic pH is lesser than 6, generally deficient in plants nutrients and occurs mostly in the southern states, western Ghat region of Maharashtra, Odisha, some part of West Bengal and northern eastern regions. Red laterite soil in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala are most suitable for crops like cashew nut. Arid soil Arid soil ranges from red to brown in color. They are generally sandy in texture and saline in the nature. In some areas, the salt content is very high and common salt is obtained by evaporating the water. Due to the dry climate, high temperature, evaporation is faster and the horizons of the soils are occupied by kanker because of the increasing calcium content downwards. The kanker layer formation in the bottom horizons restrict the infinite filtration of the water after proper irrigation these soil become cultivatable as been in the case of western rajasthan forest soil these soils are found in the hilly and mountainous regions where sufficient rain forests are available the soil texture varies according to the mountain environment where they are formed they are loamy and silty in valley side and coarse grained in the upper lower slopes. In the snow covered areas of Himalayas, their soil experiences denudation and acidic with low humus content. The soil found in the lower part of the valleys, particularly in the river terraces and alluvial fans are fertile. Soil Erosion and Soil Conservation The denudation of the soil covers and subsequent washing down is described as the soil erosion. The process of soil formation and erosion go on simultaneously and generally there is a balance between both of them. Sometimes this balance is disturbed due to the human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining etc. While natural forces like winds, glaciers and water lead to the soil erosion. The running water cuts through the clay soil and makes deep channel gullies. The land becomes unfit for cultivation and is known as the bad land. In the Chambal Basin, such lands are ravines. Sometimes, water flows as a sheet over large area drown the slope. In such cases, the topsoil is washed away. This is known as a sheet erosion. Wind blows loses soil off flat or sloping land known as the wind erosion. Contour lines can decelerate the flow of water down the slopes. This is called contour plowing. Steps can be cut down on the slopes making terraces. Terrace cultivation restricts erosion. Western and Central Himalayas have been developed terrace farming. Large field can be divided into strips. Strips of grasses are left to grow between the crops. This breaks up the force of the wind. This method is known as strip cropping. Planting lines of trees to create the shelter also works in a similar way. Rows of such trees are called shelter belts. These shelter belts have contributed significantly to the stabilization of sand dunes and stabilizing the desert in the western India.
to access more videos related to your class and subjects check out the playlist section also feel free to show your support by liking and sharing the videos and subscribing to the channel